time for Chevrolet Sports and Central update. Giannis Antetokounmpo avoiding a major injury. According to multiple reports, his left Achilles tendon is fully intact, and the Buck Stars' return to play will depend on how quickly his left calf strain heals. But he is going to miss the remaining three games of the regular season. He's going to receive daily treatment. Giannis left last night's victory over the Celtics in the third quarter after crumpling to the floor while grabbing at his left leg. The Bucks have already clinched a spot in the playoffs, though their seed is yet to be determined. The Bucks hold a one and a half game lead on the Orlando Magic and New York Knicks for the number two seed in the Eastern Conference. The Bucks were already on shaky ground. The injury to Giannis Antetokounmpo is like a bulldozer, further clearing the path to the finals for the Celtics. Between the Bucks' injury and chemistry issues, you got the Knicks who are banged up. Joel Embiid's playing on like one good knee. And Miami, it's a team that's once again hanging on for dear life to that last playoff spot. It kind of feels like finals or bust for the Celtics. There is no good reason this team should not plow its way through the Eastern Conference to face the winner in the West for the NBA title. There is an argument to be made that not winning it all would be disappointing, but not a failure for the Celtics. I disagree, but the arguments are sound. There is no argument that anything less than a finals appearance would be an epic failure for this Celtics squad. It would be a complete fail. End of story. The path is paved. Celtics just need to take it, right? Am I right? Phil Perry and Chris Forsberg are going to join me now. But first, it's time for Storylines presented by Fanatic Sportsbook. With Fanatic Sportsbook, you can earn up to 5% fan cash on your back on your bets. Spend fan cash on jerseys, fan gear, bonus bets, and more. Plus, get a personalized offer every day with Power Hour Rewards. Scan the QR code on the bottom right of the screen to download the app today. Here are the odds to win the, Celt the Eastern Conference. <laughs> I just called it the Celtics Conference because that's kind of what it is. Celtics minus 160. Milwaukee still plus 350, Philly plus 750, Caps plus 1100, Miami next at plus 1200, Knicks just below that at plus 1500. As I welcome in the guys I said what I was going to, we got Phil Perry, we got uh, our Celtics insider Chris Forsberg joining us uh, by Zoom. Okay. So I think that there are very few threats in the Eastern Conference now, including the Bucks. But we asked both of you for your um, top five biggest threats in the East. Forsberg, you want to give us – I can read your list, or do you remember your list? Do you have it? Do you want to just tell uh, us who's on there? Help me out. Let, let me, let me got, go through. There was a bunch of asterisks on it. There but I are believe a lot I of asterisks. You got the Bucks. Milwaukee Bucks. Yep. But if, if Giannis, Giannis is, is healthy. healthy. Yep, there you go. There you go. You got 76ers, it. 76ers, if Embiid is healthy. Heat. If Tyler Hero is healthy. Knicks, if OG Ananobi is fully healthy. And then I threw the Magic in there for fun because they have been a pest in past seasons. But, Trenny, you laid it out. Like, this is pretty obvious. They're really good, and there's no reason they shouldn't be in the NBA Finals. All right, so there are Chris's uh, five biggest competitors in the East. Time now for the Ford built, Big Board, Built for America, Built Ford Proud. Here are Phil's top Eastern Conference threats to the Celtics. He's doing a little drum roll here. Look at that. Celtics are first. Milwaukee is second. Philly is third. Knicks are fourth. Indiana fifth. Miami not even making the list. <laughs> but this, like, I feel like you just sort of made this list to make it, Phil. I'm not sure you believe what? any of those other guys. What are you talking about? Indiana Pacers, the way they play, the pace with which they play if they get hot and the Celtics get cold. That's a threat. Jalen Brunson to me, one of the best guards in basketball. I know Julius Randle is hurt, but the Knicks are a real threat. The Sixers, you've got a former MVP. The Bucks, you've got a former MVP. Those are all legitimate threats. The Heat, get out of here with the Heat. Chris Forsberg, their time is done. Caleb Martin's not there to perform his witchcraft anymore. They're, they're a different team. Jimmy Butler's another year older. I actually want the Celtics to face the Heat because, number one, I think they'd beat them pretty soundly. And, number two, you just get past that boogeyman. They're in your rearview mirror, and you don't worry about them. The number one threat to the Celtics not winning the Eastern Conference is the Celtics themselves. It is the easy answer. I am stunned the Celtics didn't make Chris Forsberg's list because he has been as critical as anyone of how they have handled yeah. late game situations. I'm kicking myself now. That's a, that was a brilliant move. Checkmate, Phil Perry, you picked it. We say this every year though, don't we? That the only team that can stop the Celtics is themselves. And every year the Celtics kind of <laughs> get in their own way. So I'm with you, right? Like roll it back to 22, the turnovers, the running out of gas. Cause you went too long on series last year. Too many long series. So when I hear Joe Mazzulla on the radio today talking about having to take care of series early, he's not messing around, having that game last week where they sort of dummied up a closeout game. Look, they're, they're aware of their own shortcomings. And like, Phil, I, I go back to it. You're you're 100 percent correct. Like, it's almost disrespectful to say there's a threat list in the East that goes beyond the team itself. 
Yeah, I mean, but but it's that way because even though they've talked about it before, Chris, they haven't been able to get over that hump. I do wonder, though, and I'm not even sure I believe this question that I'm asking, but the 76ers have been pretty good since Joel Embiid came back. And I know that the 76ers... It's the Sixers! I know, but at some point, is it going to... Okay, let, let, me, let, me pr- let me put it to you this way, Forsberg. People probably say about the Celtics, it's the Celtics. They always find a way to manage to shoot themselves in their own foot, just like the 76ers do. Isn't there a time or a place when both will one or both will get over the hump? No. <laughs> it's. Just, I'm sorry. Like I, I just have no faith in the in the Sixers. Uh, Maxi's had a really good year. Embiid on one leg isn't enough. And I think that's what it ultimately comes down to. Is when we sit here and we say like, oh, like you'd have to catch lightning in a bottle if you're a team like the Heat again. You'd have to be fully healthy if you're even if you're the Bucks who have had some success here in the regular season against the Celtics. To me, it just comes down to Celtics are too deep. Like the, the the other team just have too many glaring weaknesses that the Celtics can exploit, and in a series. They will, ha- they will hone in on them. And so, yeah, like, is, is the potential there for the Celtics to make their lives more difficult than they need to be? And will that could that eventually catch up to them in the NBA Finals against a good team? Absolutely. But, no, I, I just can't look at the, the, the rest of the East. It's, 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 it, it's not a threat. The Giannis injury is such a big factor in all of this, yeah. Trini, especially because it looked like Giannis and Lillard and that pick and roll it really sort of found something in the last few weeks here, and, and you worry about that in the postseason. And I also, if I'm the Celtics, while I agree with Chris, they're really deep. We know they're really talented. Where they don't have a ton of depth is in the front court. And if Chris Stapps Porzingis, we've been saying it since the moment he was acquired, right? If he stays healthy, if he stays healthy, if he stays healthy. He's been able to stay healthy for the most part, You just always have that little bugaboo in the back of your mind. Oh, boy, if this guy goes down, that really changes who they can be come the postseason. And to Joe Mazzulla's credit, he has done a good job of making sure Chris Stapps Porzingis stays healthy and managing him in the right way, which obviously it's not all that difficult during the postseason because there's more off days, but it is still a challenge and a grind if you get into seven-game series. 